What's going on guys? Foxyos is back and I'm bringing you a video today that should help the newer person coming to console port get fairly well acquainted with everything they need to to be able to start performing on a more serious level if that is your wish to do so. Uh, I know a lot of people out there just use console port for like leveling and just casual stuff like that and that's fine but there's also a lot of misconceptions that console port can't be used for anything more serious. So what we're going to do today is we are going to go over some tips, some tricks, uh, some general some general suggestions, and we're going to go over a couple console port settings that I use to help me, or to, to make it easier to perform that much better. So without any further ado, we are going to jump right into that. So here we are, I am in my Paladin Order Hall, standing uh, by some target dummies, and we're going to start going over a couple of the um, a couple of the settings that I use. In one of my previous videos, I detailed that if you wanted to heal, the best way to do so would be to use the target unit frames hold, which, again, a little refresher on that. If you go to any one of your bindings, you go to bindings, it's going to be under controller, Target unit frames hold under targeting, because this is a, a console port specific keybind. Something that only console port does that uh, the base game does not do. So, is again going to be under controller and target unit frames hold. I don't have many unit frames up right now to show you, but you can see whenever I press that keybinding, it assigns the B button to myself, and I can press I can press the keybinding and then B, and it will target myself. And it will do that for all of your raid frames. Now, I believe that there is a, a default added to the game that should fix this, but just in case there isn't, I want to go over this. And that is going to be this, this command that you're seeing right here. You're going to want to enter it into chat. And then once you enter it into chat, you're going to need to reload your UI. Uh, I want to stress that whenever you enter that command, it has to be exactly as you see it on screen. The H has to be capital, the P has to be capital, and then everything else has to be typed out exactly as you see it. Otherwise, it won't work. And what basically what this does is this will make it so the target unit frames will only assign a button combination to your unit frame and your raid frames. It won't assign a anything to your focus target it won't assign anything to your actual target or anything else like any pet frames or anything like that it will only assign the button combination to your raid frames which is pretty much what you want if you're going to go into a healing situation because you don't really want to be adding any unnecessary button combinations to your raid frames that'll make it that more that much more complex to heal once you have that typed in and you've reloaded your ui you should be set on that. And the next thing that I want to go over is how to get this little crosshair that you see on screen. I'm not entirely sure if it has been made default yet. This has single-handedly allowed me to start playing like half of my classes again. So basically what happens is whatever you move and your cursor locks, this little crosshair pops up in its place. This is the uh, ghost cursor. And it just is a, is a visual reminder of where your cursor is on the screen. Whereas before, you didn't have it. And you basically had no idea where your, where your cursor was. You lost it all the time. And you couldn't use other macro conditionals like targeting at your cursor. Now you can. So, to, go, to get that uh, added on, you're going to be typing in this command into your chat box. Again, type it exactly as you see it, capital T, capital G, and reload your UI. And that is going to bring this up. But yours is probably going to bring up a different a different texture. There are quite a few different textures that you could choose from. I chose a crosshair. What you can do is you can come over to this website make sure that changed yes this website and I will leave the link in the in the description and look at any of these 
say you can go to architect, click on that, it'll show you the architect icon. Or you can go to attack, it'll show you the attack icon. And like you, like you see, I chose crosshairs, it shows you this. You can look through all of these icons and choose, you know, like whichever one you want. And that is going to be the name of the texture that you want to choose. Once you have been over to this website and you've looked through all of these different textures and you know which one you want to choose, you will be typing in this command in your chat. But instead of where mine says crosshairs, you're going to be taking the name of the exact texture that you chose and you're going to be using that instead of crosshairs. Like for example, let me get this command really quick. If I were to have typed, let's just say that I wanted the fishing texture. I could type that in, reload my UI, and now I have the fishing hook. And it's the same thing with any of those icons that you want. If you wanted to use the engineering skin or the driver, you could use that. All you have to do is just type in, in place of crosshairs, just type in the name of the texture that you want. Me, I prefer crosshairs because it is basically a reticle of where I want to cast my spells. Whenever I'm on a class, I can do that. Right now, my paladin can't do that, so I can't really show you. And the last, the last little bit of customization that you have for that is going to be um, this command right here. And it's basically the opacity. It's the opacity of your uh, ghost cursor. And the value can be between 0 and 1. 0 is completely invisible. 1 is completely visible. I have mine set to 1 because I use mine a lot of times on all of my other alts as like a an at cursor targeting reticle. So I kind of need to see where it's at all the time. But if you don't have anything like that, you may not need it to be completely totally visible, but uh, I do. So again, what you're going to do is you're going to take that command, you're going to type it in exactly as you saw it, but instead of uh, any number, you're going to type 0 to 1, and you can type in 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 0 0.33, 0 0.67, whatever you want, to get the exact opacity that you want, but just keep in mind that 0 to 1 is the scale. 0 being like 0% visibility, 1 being 100% visibility. But now that I've got that out of the way, it's time to go over some of the useful macros that I use, because there are a lot of things that it's more difficult to do with a controller than a mouse and keyboard. But with proper use of macros, it's almost, it's almost as easy. And, you know, you'll hear a lot of people say, well, I use mouse and keyboard, I shouldn't have to use a macro for this. Well, if you're going to use a controller, you do. So you may as well know it. So let's go ahead and go over these. Now, most of the most of the really important macros that I use are going to be character specific. Um, I don't really have anything that's too difficult to use on Paladin. So I'm just going to go over a couple of the most the most impactful ones. Like, this is my Lay on Hands macro that I used, and you'll see that it says cast at target target Lay on Hands. Basically what that will do is it will cast it at the target of my target. So you can see this Blood Elf Silver Hand Templar is fighting this human Silver Hand Templar. If I used my at target target macro on this Silver Hand Templar, it would cast Lay on Hands at this Silver Hand Templar, and now vice versa because it casts at the target of my target. And this is really beneficial when you're in a raid or a dungeon or something like that, and your tank is about to go down, and you're already targeting the boss if you're DPSing. So all you have to do is hit this macro, and it immediately lay on hands the tank, or whoever the, whoever the boss is attacking. And I have the same one for Blessing of Protection as well, except right now mine is kind of set up to target at a specific person. But again, this thing will be at target, target. And that's really beneficial for uh, certain boss fights. 
Like say Fenrir in Halls of Valor, whenever he does his scent of blood and he starts chasing someone, he targets that person. So all like at that point all I have to do is just like hit this button and it casts his blessing and protection at the person that he's chasing. And it's the same thing with, you know, any other uh, boss mechanic that casts something at a person. Like, I use this macro for heroic or mythic scenarios in Emerald Nightmare because he casts Spear of Nightmare at the tank, and it was a fast cast. Like, you had to be ready for it. So I had to see the boss's cast bar as well. And basically, whenever I saw him casting Spear of Nightmare, I hit this with the tank. Or I hit this and it went on the tank and basically absorbed every single bit of the Spirit Nightmare damage because it was physical damage. So overall, that's pretty much all that I use that you really need to get going on, say, like a Rip Paladin. But there are far more in-depth ones that I use on other characters, like my Shaman or my Druid or Demon Hunter or something like that. So... We are going to go and hop over to the Shaman. Alright, we're back on the Shaman. And now we're going to be going over the Shaman macros that's going to get a little bit more in-depth. And it's going to really, really highlight why the Ghost Cursor is so important. Because once uh, the memory reading part of Wild Mapper got nuked, I couldn't play the rest of Shaman anymore. Because like, there's so much stuff the rest of Shaman uses that you need to like be able to target the ground you know like the only way I was able to get by with um, Enhanced Shaman is all the ground target stuff wasn't really super impactful and I could just set that to like to cast at player like cast it at my feet and that was generally fine because I was in melee I was generally able to uh, I was generally able to cast it at my feet and that'd be fine so we're going to head into the macros, and immediately with Studio we have our Healing Rain, we have our Lightning Surge Totem, Spirit Link, Artifact Ability, Gift of the Queen. That's, that's already four macros on this Shaman that I need the Ghost Cursor for, that I wasn't able to use until this thing came back. So basically what it does is it casts at Cursor Healing Rain. So what that's going to do is where where you see the, the crosshair at right now, it's going to cast Healing Rain there. If I want to throw my cursor way out here, I can cast my Lightning Surge Totem there. And that was one of the biggest benefits to getting the Ghost Cursor back. Because now if I'm in... Uh, a dungeon or a raid and I'm healing I can say hey this person needs to be healed and I can throw my healing rain down on them and because of the very strong nature of my tier 21 healing wave and healing surge have a hundred percent chance to heal a player standing in healing rain for 40 percent of the amount so that's basically an extra 40 percent healing on my healing rain and healing surge to a person standing in my healing rain like that's where a lot of my healing comes from actually in dungeons and it's great being able to do that and finally able to play Resto Shaman again. Because it's actually really fun. Like, I have I have a bunch of cooldowns and stuff like that. Like, I have Ascendance. I have Spirit Link Totem. Uh, Healing Tide Totem. Like, I have so many things that I can chain together. And, like, honestly, it's, Resto Shaman's fun. Pretty fun. Like, I think it's one of my favorite healers. I gotta get used to it again. But, there's that. Um... Another macro that you'll see me use for just general use is my 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 general CC macros. Whatever CC that I have on a character, I will have a macro for it and I'll have it focus. Because the last thing you want to do is like go to CC something and then forget that it exists. Like forget that the thing exists and then your CC wears off and all of a sudden it's not CC'd anymore. So I can't hex this, but if I could, you would see that it popped up on my focus, it would hex, and it would get a hex debuff on it that I could that I could keep an eye on. And now I know exactly when this hex is coming off. So like I can come back over to this guy, like say I'm 
So like now I'm throwing uh, lightning bolts at this guy. I'm like DPSing him. And I see that Hex is about to come off cooldown. I just come back over here. I like Hex this guy. Now next on the list is something that's possibly going to save you a lot of action bar space. And until I figured this out, I was not able to really uh, have all of my bar or have all of my buttons on my bars that I wanted to, because I just didn't have enough room. So this is going to be called a help harm macro. Basically, show tooltip cast harm chain lightning help chain heal. So what that does is the way that I typed it out, it has chain heal as my default button. So if I have no target, it's going to cast chain heal. If I target myself, it's going to cast chain heal. But if I target this raiding dummy, it's going to cast chain lightning. And it's the same thing with my healing surge and lightning bolt. Like I can cast lightning bolt with my B button or I can detarget and start healing myself. That that was huge actually, like being able to do that. So that's going to save a lot of room on your action bars as well. If especially if you have like a lot of different abilities that you use that do kind of the same thing but in opposite manners like chain heal and chain lightning are perfect to go together because I can target an ally and heal him and anyone nearby or I can target an enemy and damage it and anyone nearby. And I actually believe that's about it for um, Resto Shaman. You can see I've done the same thing for at Cursor Earthquake whenever I'm playing uh, Elemental. I have the same for my Earthbind Totem as well, cast at, at Cursor. Like if I need to like really slow someone clutch, I can just like drop that and start slowing them. But yeah, I think that's about it for Resto Shaman. Uh, now we're going to hop over to the Druid. He has basically the same things. But there are a couple other like cast sequence macros that I use on him that I would like to show you. So I will be back in a moment. Okay, now we are back and we are on the druid. And going over the macros for the druid, it's mostly everything is the same. What is this? Okay. Mostly everything is the same. The, about the only thing that I need at cursor macros for as a druid is my, at effer, is my effervescence. So like I can just like drop that on the ground and get some people healed out of it. As you can see here, I have uh, my cursor macro for Starfall whenever I play Balance. I have the same focus macro for my Entangling Roots. So like if I was going to uh, do that, I can Entangling Roots him and then start DPSing this. And then I can see, you know, how long he has left on his Entangling Roots. So I can, you know, hop back over here and then root him again. So that's, that's pretty beneficial. Let's get these trees out of our face. Uh, another thing that I use is I macro my Berserking and with Essence of Ganyr. Since that basically already increases how fast my dots tick, or my hot stick, I want to macro in Berserking with it as well. So they tick even faster. And basically, if we were to throw some hots out on these guys, You can see they're ticking pretty normal. Throw this on, and then just like that, they're like healing so fast. Like there's so much healing going out on them. So that's a, that's what that's useful for. This is my Ursula's Vortex as well, my at cursor macro. So I can like drop it on these guys, and if they were to try to run out of that, it would pull them back in. But they're not gonna run out of it because they're target dummies. Now the biggest one that I use on my Resto Druid is this cast sequence macro to enter bear form. So basically cast sequence reset equals 5. That means from the moment that I press the button the first time, it'll enter bear form. And then in 5 seconds, it will reset back to bear form. So if I haven't used a frenzied regeneration within 5 seconds, it resets back to bear form. Like 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, and then it pops back. So basically what this does is it allows me to enter bear form 
and then hit a frenzy regeneration on the same button. And that's actually a, a huge thing as a, as a resto druid, because in like right now I have 5.7 million health. If I enter bear form, I have 8.9 million health. And if I enter bear form with 8.9 million health and my pride as refreshes, that gives me a 2.39 million absorb shield. So I effectively have like 11, almost 12 million health now in bear form. So I can survive almost any damage mechanic that would kill any other healer or any other, um, any other DPS. And I don't even have to use my bark skin. And basically... If I did manage to take a spike from like 100% health down to like 90, I could just like hit this macro and freeze your regeneration and heal myself all the way back up pretty quick. So that's that's really a great thing to have going on with that. And it's it's uh, very convenient to have it on the same button because if I did take that that burst damage and I'm like really stressing out about it, I can just like be like, oh crap, I just like spam the button, and like as soon as I hit in bear form, I'm healing. Yeah, as far as um, other macros go, I, I cast, I have this Innervate macro, cast at Zilly Innervate, so it will always cast on me, because Innervate's weird. If you read the tooltip, it says, infuse a friendly healer with energy, allowing them to cast spells without, without spending mana. So, it's... Like, if I cast that, if I tried to, like, if I was healing this guy, and I tried to cast Innervate, it wouldn't let me cast Innervate, because it thinks I'm trying to cast Innervate at this target dummy. Which I'm not trying to do. I'm, I'm not trying to give our warrior, or our demon hunter, and our and our raid mana. I, I They don't use mana, they don't need to cast spells without using mana. So I have this macro set up to cast at myself at all times. It, it does kind of suck a little bit. If I'm in a raid with another healer, and they need Innervate, well, they're pretty much out of luck, unless I dedicate another keybind to that, which I might do. But, in almost every situation, I'm trying to cast Innervate at myself. I think that's pretty much it for Druid. Now, just one last thing that I really want to show you to kind of help uh, get everything settled in. Uh, I'm going to hop over to my Demon Hunter really quick and I'm going to show you how I handle like jumping with him. It's basically the same way that I handle effing distance and stuff. But give me one moment and I will be back on the Demon Hunter. Alright, I am back on the Demon Hunter and basically the only specific macro that I need for the Demon Hunter you can see that I use uh, at player macros for a lot of these. So like basically what at player macros do is that does exactly what it says. It casts a spell at a player. So like I can use this. And like whereas normally if I tried to use Sigil of Flame, it would like be a target. But I don't I, I honestly never really want to target it. So I just have it drop immediately at myself. And that's how that's how I handle that. And for my Sigil of Chains, I do that at Cursor, so I can target where that goes. Same thing with uh, Silence and Misery. I target those. Um, whenever I'm doing uh, Havoc, I do cast my Metamorphosis at myself. Because I don't really use it as a leap. I just want to get into Metamorphosis and start DPSing as fast as possible. But I also... Uh, you know, here's also my focus macro for Imprison. Same, the same reason. But the biggest one that I use almost all the time is my at cursor macro for Infernal Strike. You know, like a lot of people tend not to try to play uh, a warrior or something that has a like, jump like this because it's it's kind of daunting. But this is where the uh, the ghost cursor comes in handy. You can just pretty much choose roughly where you're going to jump at. So like I can extend it and jump all the way out or I can bring my cursor back in. Which is generally what I want to do whenever I'm uh, fighting something. Like I can be fighting this. 
and then like I kind of like have my camera up and just like jump and start DPSing. And pretty much every time that it comes off cooldown, or if I'm waiting for a big AOE pack, I can just wait for them to come out and then hit that and jump on them. But this works the same way for Demon Hunter and Warrior and uh, Outlaw Rogue if you have the grappling hook talented. You can just like throw your cursor way out and jump. That's how that works. But as far as most of my macros go, I think I've covered pretty much everything. Because as far as characters that I play, I have uh, Paladin and Shaman. Monk, Druid, Warrior, Demon Hunter. And the Monk doesn't utilize any macros that I haven't showed on any of my other characters. Neither does Warrior or anything like that. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it. I think. I hope that those tips and tricks has uh, helped anyone that was wanting to push into more challenging content get a good grasp on how to do so. So, if it did, great. I'm glad it did. If it didn't, let me know why it didn't. Maybe you already knew all this stuff. Maybe you're already uh, that far ahead of the curve. But, yeah, let me know if there's anything I can do better in the future. Let me know if, the, if I did anything wrong. Let me know what I did right. That was pretty important, too. Because if I did something good, I don't want to change it. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this tutorial guide. Have fun. Thanks for watching.